States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I call the December 17, 2020 Village Board meeting to order. Number two, roll call. Shows everyone is in attendance except for Peter and he has been excused. Number three, agenda changes. If there are none, we'll move to four, consent agenda. A, December 2nd, 2020 special board meeting minutes. B, December 3rd, 2020, regular board meeting minutes. C, presentation of accounts and other claims against the village. Are there any questions? I had one question on the vouchers, and I'm trying to find it now. Um, okay, on the water utility, I just want to make sure it's something we needed a budget for, or we had it in the budget, or if it was something we needed to move money. Um, the check valve, Wastewater treatment plant effluent wet well. It was over five thousand, and I just we got an emergency it. repair. Okay. Yeah. All right. So and we do we do have the. It's kind of a payment now, payment later. We we've got the money for it. It's okay. Just, sometimes when things. Understandable. I just wanted to make sure because it was over five thousand. I just wanted to make sure that if it was something we needed to budget for. Or, okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Then I will make a motion to Can approve. I, I'm sorry, Julie. I just sorry. had one more question. I just wanted to ask about um, the voucher for travel expenses. Was that included in the contract with PPA? No, that was a separate discussion. Uh, once we found we had uh, people from outside the state, uh -huh. um, we talked with Jeannie and, and PAA, and they, they mentioned that a typical amount for a travel voucher for someone coming out of state would be four hundred dollars, and so in talking with Jeannie, she said that would probably be fine. So that's where that came from. Okay, I just and we checked in the budget that we had okay. money. I just to I cover. didn't know if we had discussed it. So and I'm assuming another one's coming then. Probably. There would be there. There's two. There should be two eventually again yeah, for okay. the two out of staters. Okay, all right. I, that's the only. It is. It's a good point. I mean, it's something. <coughs> up front, it, we probably should have talked about it in the discussion so you mm -hmm. guys understood mm -hmm. that if you were selecting out-of-staters, mm -hmm. that there would be travel expenses mm -hmm. uh, with that, but it didn't come up. Yeah, and I wasn't aware of it, but then I'm assuming it's probably pretty routine, but I wanted to yeah. check that out. Right. Thank you. That's the only question I have. Okay. Then I will make a motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Five pre-registered citizens to be heard, and there are none. Six committee reports, a special village board meeting, December 9th, 2020. Um, why did we have that on there? If, if anybody wanted to report on it. Okay. <laughs> Unless we just wanted to report that we made a decision on the administrator position, which is Nathan Treadwell. And we just want to congratulate you, Nathan. Then number seven, unfinished business from previous meetings. There is none. Eight, new business. A, resolution R-39-20, SC Swiderski, final approval, developer's agreement, and plan set. Um, this was in your packet. Uh, the developer's agreement has been uh, worked on between uh, Carl, myself, and uh, Bob over the past few months with S.E. Skirsky. Um, and the plan set is their plans going forward. That's just, it hasn't changed since the last time they met with us. Um, and we just need their official stamp of approval. Or any questions that you guys have, uh, we do have a rep here. Um, if you guys need to, if you have questions for him about construction. Yeah, a more detailed plan set is in the attachments, I believe, uh, or in the packet. Pretty sure. Yeah. It's a large packet. It's <laughs> <laughs> hard to find anything in here. But yeah, they're in there. And we sent uh, one of the uh, one of the plans.
plan set is the fire truck ingress egress map. Uh, we sent that over to fire department for review. Uh, we're sure it'll be fine, but uh, again, we're trying to involve everybody. So uh, pretty much everything's there. Uh, once they get the final plans, uh, we'll probably have Ron Wolf look over the water and sewer uh, when we're ready when we get to that point. So. Should we mention that we changed the, the Gibbons role? Oh, the address, uh, originally we were, yeah, we were going to call this a West Main address, the 900 block, uh, but the county uh, requested, uh, that was back when there was originally going to be an exit on Main Street, mm -hmm. uh, but I think due to safety concerns and uh, mentioned by a few people that uh, with the driveway coming off of Gibbons, it's going to be a 100 block of Gibbons address, the 101, 103. Uh, make it a little easier for GPS and everything to find. Mm -hmm. I thought that uh, if it did go on on 15, that was just going to be an exit anyway. So. Especially in the winter. Yeah, I can get mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not good. It's not on that hill. Uh, so uh, I shared these designs with the school district. They're interested in the total number of units and for future planning. Uh, same with Harriet, the bus garage. He's going to be interested in that. Uh, fire truck ingress egress because the school buses are similar in size. So yeah, everything looks great. And, uh, they've been a, they've been easy to work with. Yeah, so I can't. Uh, they're a pretty good group. So. so, Carl, you're waiting to hear back from uh, Chief Dorn? No, no, I just wanted them to see it. Oh, so he has. Yeah, and then well, we actually, yeah, you know, we talked to them a while back, and uh, one of the things they're concerned with uh, again is uh, signage. Yeah. Addressing, you know, possibly larger signage on the building saying which building it is. Yeah. And uh, we we this was back in in the back room. We were talking with the SC service about that kind of stuff. So. Okay. And Ron Wolf is also true. Um, not this, but the actual when the final plans are done. Because yeah, the, okay, these are these are yeah, just yeah, yeah, these are preliminary. Oh, what's it called? Well, but but he's revealed this. Yes, he. No, because we don't really have the all the plumbing plans. I mean, we have a site plan that shows the plumbing, but yeah. we don't have the plumbing plan. Well, is, is there any reason why Ron should no, no, look at this? Okay. No, this is a, there are, you know, Mach 1's a quality outfit as well, yeah. or Mach 4, remember, Mach 5. Okay, that's my only question. Do we have an updated estimate for when the first livable units are going to be? Actually, yeah, so we do. Uh, 2022. Do packet? When, well, <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> I, I, I just don't have that much time in the day. When it was supposed to be completed. So the plan now, based on the construction uh, information we got from them, they want to pretty much start building all of them at once in 2021. Um, so then it'll be finished. Every unit will almost be finished at, towards the end of 2022. Yes, yeah, so that's the first one that finished in 2022. Should be February. Okay. 22. Right. Just wanted to. Which is the one in three bedrooms with the attached garage. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? So we're doing a resolution. I guess should we do the resolution, Bob? That is subject to Ron Wolf. And no, no, just no. Do that. It's written here. I'm okay. Not satisfied with that. I just needed to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Anything yeah, like quite. that would be covered under occupancy if we don't. I like the plumbing, we're not going to give occupancy. So I don't think that's an issue okay. here. We're mainly concerned about the overall agreement. Okay. So. All right. So then I will make a motion to approve resolution R-39-20 for SC Swiderski final approval, developer's agreement, and plan set. Second. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. B. Resolution R-28-20, adopting wage resolution. Uh, can, can we, uh, you, wanna let you can go if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, he didn't say much, but. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's Nathan. Nathan. Oh. Nathaniel. Thanks, everyone. All right. We look Thanks. forward to working in your community. Yeah, no problem. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions on the wage resolution? The only one I asked, wondered about was the summer employees. 
I'm trying to scroll down to it, and it's taking me a while. <laughs> um, seven to ten dollars, is that accurate? Hours per hour? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are we at? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what Mike has paid. I mean, they're high schoolers, typically summer jobs. Um, I think last time most, I think most were around the nine and eight if they were recurring. I think he starts some of the people lower. Okay. I mean, it's obviously probably going to be minimum wage. Um, it's going to be the 725 is minimum wage, so. Okay. Yeah, I would hope it would be at least minimum, even yeah. if they are high school kids, because it's a responsibility with the yep. watching the other kids. That's I don't something. think anyone's lower than eight, even. So, but. Okay. That's the only question I had. Thank you. Do we just want to note that on here that it should at least say 725? Yeah. Because it's going to be a new director coming in and, right? Right. So well, maybe we need yeah. to. It should be minimum wage at least. So. Okay. And I think he just went up every year if you came came right. back. He he raised you. So, you know, most kids come back two or three years. So then you maybe hit the $10, you know, because they're, they're uh, easier to work with because they know the routine and everything, so. I just know the issues we're having, Allie's having trying to find, you know, library staff at, at a lower wage, so if we could make sure we get it at a competitive, somewhat competitive, so we get some quality people, and I think we have had, you know. Yeah, just we really have a lot of good rec kids. Yep, yep. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, we're looking for a motion. Motion to approve R-2820, resolution adopting 2021 salaries and wages. Second. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. C, resolution R-37-20, write off outstanding checks. I will take this. There's only a couple, I think there's five, four or five. And the last time we wrote off checks was in 2017, I believe. So we've tried contacting them numerous times, sending letters and nothing. So I brought it to you as a write off. Yeah. All right, then I'll make a motion to approve R-37-20 to write off outstanding checks. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mm -hmm. D, resolution R-38-20, adopting 2021 through 2025 comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. I'll take that. The resolution is the final step in the assembly of the uh, 2021 through 2025 comp plan for the parks. Uh, Trish couldn't make it tonight, uh, so uh, basically we're refreshing our 2015 to 2019 plan. Uh, again, this, these plans are important when it comes to receiving state grants, money, uh, training, uh, or qualifying for other state assistance. And they're also good for planning uh, at the federal level. Uh, some of these plans are required as well. So again, it's, it's just another tool for uh, department heads to use, mainly me and the administrator. And uh, when those larger grants come in that we apply for, we have to have stuff like this completed. Uh, did you guys, uh, you guys have that in your packet, right? Did anybody get a chance to look through it? Yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty similar to the last one. There's not a lot of changes. We, we, we double checked uh, some of our park acreage, uh, changed some names, things like that, uh, reviewed where we were at. Uh, not much has changed. I think it'll get interesting in 25 once it bypasses here. And we start, we have done some more stuff for the parks and then we might post bypass and we might start focusing more on trails, things like that. So uh, for now, uh, yeah, it's a nice plan. Yeah. East Central does a great job for us. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a question, Carl. I know we've talked about a committee before, but they, they noted in there the Hort Hortonville Outdoor Leisure and Parks Committee. It was that term terminology was used is that I, I think that's a boilerplate terminology right yeah. is that something that we could consider doing just for um, we actually have 
uh, Urban Forestry Committee. Right. And uh, well, you've been on that, but uh, I think as we start getting closer, uh, well, post bypass, when we start really planning, getting getting heavy into planning, I think we we need to create that committee. Uh, it's it's pretty common amongst larger communities. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what Green will have, but they certainly you want to look towards the future, so right. uh, you, you don't want to put all that in one guy's back or a gal's back. But yeah, we that committee will probably evolve more over the next four or five years. Uh, for now, I think uh, public facilities or public works would suffice, and maybe a little bit of urban forestry, but eventually, yeah, you're going to need something like that. Yeah, I was just, some of the comments at the end, too, there was a man that volunteered to help but he commented on the pickleball court, which I've talked yeah. to you about before, but um, he's a retired fire ed teacher, wants to be involved. So I mean, I think there's people out there that we could get involved, mm -hmm. and I, I just really feel strongly about that, that going forward. Yeah, yeah well, and we could reach out. Uh, I don't think we'd have a problem getting uh, citizen members. It's just getting it up and going again, and, and I think, like I said, over the next few years, it's gonna be interesting for the village. A lot, a lot of projects, and um, we actually have money now for projects, so, um, yeah, we'll have to look into that. Thank you. I, vol I volunteer you to be chair. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I would be happy to be on it, but I think we should get some other people. All right, why don't we talk more later? Younger people to be yeah. Well, that's important. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything in the, the plan itself that stands out? Uh, Again, it's just a tool. It's not, it's meant to be dynamic as well and ever evolving, so. Uh, That's usually one of the juiciest committees people want to be involved in on parks because you can see real substantial mm -hmm. change, fast, right. you know, so I, I, I think that is a good direction. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe well, if that's putting more money in the CIP, you know, maybe it is time to start that back up. You know, I've been having a, I wouldn't say difficulty, I don't mean like that, but, you know, getting a, Public facilities together to talk about parks and stuff like that. Maybe, uh, maybe we de need to do this at a grassroots level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are citizens. I, I know that there's yeah. there's a ton of uh, people out there that are interested. This this is their niche. Yeah. yeah. So and, uh, this they would be interested. Like I said I have an idea of what I want, but this this shouldn't be about me and what what I want. You know, it should be about what everyone wants. So. And I think the charts were talked about the steady activities and then the ones that are kind of dying off. I think those are important things to keep in mind, yeah. you know, that aren't yeah. aren't growing as much as some other activities that people might enjoy as we right. move forward. Yeah, and again, uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt as well. And just, you want to make as many people happy as possible. Uh, there's always going to be one or two we oh, yeah. you just can't, you know, so. But yeah, maybe that's something we should do this late winter, spring, is get something like that going. Or earlier, is, mm -hmm. uh, we've got some decisions to make at Miller Park, um, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. talk to me later. About I will do that. Thank right. you. When we're looking for a motion, I'll make a motion to approve resolution R 38 20, adopting a 2021 to 2025 comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Proposed. Motion carried. E award engineering contract, 2021 Oak Street utility project. This is a uh, base services proposal from McMahon, uh, Ron Wolf over there, uh, for the uh, engineering services for the Oak Street utility project. Uh, most engineering firms are anywhere between four and six percent. This is comparable. Uh, Ron has done most of our engineering. I know we have full three, but I prefer Ron. Ron always finds a way to save the village money in the end. So, again, uh, I want to get this thing bid out. Uh, Ron's getting ready to go. In. Uh, anyways, we're, we're, we're going to get a bid out January 4th, somewhere in that range, and possibly have a bid opening and award February, the first meeting in February, which is pretty good timeline because uh, this project, I need it to be done in June, July, or August. By the middle of August, it needs to be wrapped up. And uh, we're gonna meet with Todd uh, right after the holidays. Uh, what's Todd's looking for? Yeah. 
in, not town, sorry, uh, from the high school. And uh, they might piggyback some projects on it as well. Uh, maybe I can hit them up for some help on the uh, light poles as well, uh, which is a separate funding source we've been building up. So uh, I think, you know, Todd, yeah, Todd's happy to work with us. So uh, again, we have a pretty good relationship with the school district. Anyways, he understands that this is a summertime project as well. So again, I just want to order to Ron Wolf. Uh, he's been a, a rock for the village, and I don't see anything out of the ordinary with the, the pricing. Uh, they can't just give you a flat number. It it's, you know, usually works out to whatever percentage of the project is. I think right now he's got it, if you add it all up, it's a little over ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000, and that's about right for a $200,000 project. Are there any questions for Carl? If not, we would look for a motion. This motion just needs to say award engineering contract. I'm just trying to look to see if there's anything specific that we have to say. No? I'll make a motion to award an engineering contract for the 2021 Oak Street Utility Project. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Happy you're getting this all, Carl, since we're working on that. Yeah, the earlier the better. F, resolution R-31-20, adopting 2021 water and sewer utility budget. All right, as you can see, it's, it's in the packet. Uh, Page 113, I think it starts. In the memo I handed out to you guys, uh, I kind of hit the high points on some of the uh, increases in expenses and some of the increases in revenue. Uh, these are the high points. Uh, the Oak Tree Utility Project it drives up the actual increase on the uh, sewer side and water side as well uh, because I'm showing more money coming from reserves, our, our system improvement fund, which is basically the bank account. So we're pulling more money in so it, and spending more money out of the bank account. It's not affecting the rate payer, but it's, it's showing up as an increase. Uh, there's also some employee percentage split changes you know, with, with the new administration and some changes there. Uh, uh, my operators, I changed them from 90% utility to 95, uh, put some of their burden back onto the utility. Uh, they rarely do any actual village work, so it, it's not really fair to the village to pick up 10% of their wastewater costs. Uh, DPW, I, I used to be 60-40, I changed that to 50-50 uh, just to be equitable to uh, the job as considering the amount of time I use, whether it's utility or village. Um, the public works foreman at 25% utility, uh, increase that up, and uh, sewer depreciation was a big one that shows up as an increase in uh, expenditures. Uh, for auditing purposes, uh, we had to add another 47000 to that. So that's the expenditure increases and why they're there. Oh, and the public works foreman, uh, we, we took another guy that was 70-30 utility and I put the new foreman in 70-30, put the other guy back in 95-5 for village. And of course that part-time position, uh, half of that's utility. So. so anyways, that's the Expenditures. Does anybody want to talk about expenditures before we get to revenues? Well, we can get to that. I'll talk about revenues real quick. Uh, my projected 2020 bu budget revenue uh, was estimated at 1.5 percent. That's this year, uh, over 2019. Uh, actual numbers are coming up to be about 10 percent, and I think I attribute most of that to COVID. People staying from home, working from home, using more water and sewer. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, lost revenue and in industrial, but it's, it's such a small percentage of the village's overall budget that it doesn't really have a great effect. Uh, uh, residential is up considerably. Uh, I'm showing a revenue increase of 16%, of which 15% is those system funds I'm pulling out of the bank. Uh, every year when they do the audit, they say, you know, uh, you only made $200,000, you're not making enough money. Well, that $200,000 is what goes in the bank and then I'll pull 100000 back out for a project or something like that. So we're actually slowly building up our money in the bank accounts. So again, uh, with 15% of that coming uh, out of the sewer, 
or the system improvement fund, uh, I'm actually projecting revenues at a uh, 1% increase, even though I know they're probably 10%. So we're putting away money, and uh, it's quite possible in the spring, you know, we may look at uh, the water rates again. Uh, the sewer rates, there ain't much we can do about that until 2030. With the water, we can probably drop 11 cents or so. Not a lot, but it might help. Um, like I said, excluding the sub funds, uh, the revenue increase is uh, approximately 1% over 2019, so actual. And again, I'm confident in meeting the rate of return recommended by the auditors. Uh, like I said, they, like, they have numbers they like to see. I have realistic numbers. We put money in the bank, we're fine. So. Uh, is there anything in the budget itself you guys want to talk about? Yeah, um, DNR SEW recipient, what is that, Carl? Which page is that? I don't think I can find it again. <laughs> 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 is that just sewer? I think uh, it's the last, last page. Page one. one. Yeah. <laughs> which, which page? Fourth from the bottom, page one. On the revenue page. Uh, on sewer or water? Uh, it's in sewer. 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 Okay. DNR sewer replacement applied. Then there's an expense oh. called DNR sewer replacement. The DNR, uh, yeah, the DNR uh, equipment replacement fund. Uh, I've got ten thousand dollars. The DNR sewer replacement applied. Uh, every year, uh, there's a formula. It's called the SUTS <laughs> sewer user charge system. Anyways, it's all based about the value of my pumps, the value of my blowers, the value of this and that and that and this. Anyways, that value is calculated out over 20 years and it's a depreciation fund. And whatever that stuff depreciates every year, you got to add that amount into a equipment replacement fund. Uh, right now we have, it's, it's, it comes up to, if you look at expenditures, the very bottom of the sewer budget, there's a sewer depreciation fund. It's 37000 something in there. I think I know that, but uh, anyways, that's that money. Uh, this year, we had a lot of problems down at the plant, like Julia pointed out with valves and pumps and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Approximately uh, the same amount of money I would put in the sewer replacement fund. I would, if these were above and beyond expenses, I would have taken that money out of sewer replacement fund just to pay those bills, but then again, I would put that money back in there. So what I'm gonna do this year is I'm just gonna put the money into the sewer replacement fund and not spend some other money down below okay. in uh, capital. So it'll be a wash. Uh, but anyways, the equipment replacement fund, uh, we put about 37 grand in there every year. It's a separate account. Uh, we got to get DNR approval to use the money. We just send them an email saying we're using it to our base and engineer. Anyways, uh, it's made for emergencies and stuff like that. But uh, I didn't, even though we had a lot of issues this year, uh, capital expenditures were down, so I'm just going to write it out and not take the money out of the bank and just take it out of operational expenses. I still plan on putting some away considerable amount. So that's a good question. <coughs> yeah, if you go to the very bottom of the sewer, you'll see the uh, sewer replacement fund 3790, debt retirement 10, and system improvement fund is 150. That's all money going into the bank. So again, some of that money, some of that 150 is our depreciation coverage, which we're required by the DOA, which is why our water rates are so high. But by us putting away that money every year, the following year, I spend, I was telling Dan how it works. If I put 200 grand away every year, I like to spend anywhere between 85 and 150, you know, bounce back and forth for water and sewer projects in the street instead of taking out loans and getting in that okay. rut. So we're putting money away in the bank, we're taking a little bit out, but we put more in, we take a little bit out. So we're building it up. So in 2025, uh, when Nathan has to buy new tertiary filtration equipment, we should have the money to pay for it. And then uh, some rate structure built in to also pay for it, that we won't need to raise any rates through 2030. Uh, and then at that time, the wastewater plan to be paid for 
and that in and of itself is 350000 a year. So that, that, I recommend you just drop the rates, 350000 a year. So that's going to be a big year. Uh, but you'll still have some revenue to take care of other stuff. So. Anyway, it's not bad. Our rates are high. We got a, we got a Ferrari of a waste water plant. There's nothing we can do about it. Water we can lower a little bit, but it's mostly symbolic. Any questions? If not, then we will look for a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve resolution R-31-20 adopting 2021 water and sewer utility budgets. I'll second. Roll call. Dan? Aye. 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 Motion carried. G-2021 capital, capital Improvement Plan Squad Purchase. I'll take that one. Um, in your packet on page 127, 128, and on is um, two, two bids. Um, Ewald has a state contract for squad cars. Um, they came in at $34,656. <coughs> All World um, came in at $35,019.56. Um, All World was a little bit higher just because they put in tax and title, or I should say the um, title and the license plates, where Ewald did not. Um, I think there's a difference of like $194.08, so I'm Hoping that we can go with all world. Seems that there are neighbors. Yeah. We've typically gone with local, even if it's just a smidge higher, versus out of town, or even though we're in Greenville, for God's sake. But we typically buy local if we can. So all world forward. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just looking for approval for a purchase of the squad. Where is Ewald located, Chris? They're the two six two area plan. Where did they're exactly the same vehicle? Apples to apples. Oh yeah, it's just hard to tell that there. Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the amount of thirty-five thousand nineteen dollars and fifty-six cents. Uh, for all world for purchase a new squad. I'll second that. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. H is 2021 Capital Improvement Plan Library Interior Shelving. I can take that one. Um, this is kind of a formality. The library shelving project had been approved by the library board, and then the funds had already been approved within the capital improvement plan um, on December 3rd. Um, I provided the, um, the specs, the outline of what our shelving will look like. The first phase of our shelving was completed yesterday, and it's the exterior walls. Um, and I am more than happy to bring anybody in to the library after a meeting. Um, it, it's like apples to oranges. The library looks absolutely amazing and brand new and it, it's just, it blows my mind. Um, I was a little enthusiastic when the workers showed up. I think I might have scared them a little bit. Um, but <laughs> you get what you get. <laughs> so, um, this is kind of a formality. The shelves, I only provided one quote just because they have to match the ones we already purchased this, in this round. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to continue with the interior shelving. Any questions for Allie? Please come visit and see them. The, the new shelves. Please come visit and see them. They're beautiful. <laughs> so great. Allie, the amount that you're looking for a motion, is it that 
Is it this amount on here, or is it? Um, it is. Yep, it's the forty-five thousand five hundred nineteen ninety-two. And the library board, I'm assuming this is all yeah. edited. And all it's all done deal. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I'll make a motion to approve the twenty twenty-one CIP library interior shelving in the amount of forty-five thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and ninety-two cents from Demco. I'll second that. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. Any other miscellaneous topics for future discussions? Who seconded that last one? I got that seconded. Thank you. Anyone have any suggestions? If not, We'll move to nine, report of village officials, a interim administrator. A uh, couple of items. Uh, on the agenda, it mentions a PA presentation. We had talked about that in the <coughs> past. Um, I And I think someone had mentioned late February or mid February. So I talked to Chris, he's free on the 21st, which is the second meeting. Uh, talking with the staff, they thought perhaps a uh, committee of the whole that night um, might work. Doesn't have to be, but that that's a possibility. And Chris is free that night, so in talking with Nathan and others, um, and maybe uh, it could be left open in terms of what how how you want to go about that meeting, or what questions you want answered, or how you want Chris uh, to approach his presentation um, but anyway if, if, if you want to go forward that night is available and then uh, you can uh, work on an agenda maybe in between uh, okay. with Nathan to, to see what specifically you'd want to cover okay so it makes sense to at least get on our calendars right if that works for you guys it, as, as a date so you said it's January 21st then <laughs> Right. Okay. If, if it works with you, uh, so it'd be five o'clock uh, prior to the uh, board meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, just to follow up on a, a, a memo that I sent out to to the board, I think with the hiring of Nathan as an internal candidate um, and the holiday season, it really doesn't make much sense to have an interim administrator anymore. So I was proposing with your permission that this would be you know my last meeting uh, and um, I said I, I'm free beyond that to come back and talk to Nathan if he ever needs anything he's got a good support staff here so I'm not sure what he'll need but if he did or he wanted any phone calls I'd be happy to to help I, I think I live 10 minutes away so you know it's not a big deal if, if there's something that I can help with um, uh, it's been a pleasure working with all of you and getting to know you better and to learn more about Hortonville, to work with all the staff has been a real good experience too. Um, it's interesting because uh, I had two kids go through, I, I think I've told the story to Jean about these, I've had two kids go through the Hortonville School District living in Greenville for at least over 20 years. <coughs> my, my route from Greenville to Hortonville usually didn't go past Oak Street. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I go to Oak Street. Well, I got to get to the baseball fields. I had kids that played all the sports, uh, so I had to get to the baseball field or the football field or the gymnasium, and maybe the subway. But you know, that was my knowledge. Maybe that's similar for a lot of Greenville residents. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, just you don't really. And I learned a lot more about the village working here. That things that I didn't even know about your community, your identity, your history, and um, working with the lake and uh, your neighborhoods, how, how you know a lot of pretty neighborhoods that you don't see, you know, just going to Oak Street and back <laughs> around. So uh, uh, I was really happy to to have that experience um, and learn more about Horton. I thought maybe. And I don't know how much of the, uh, the library works with Greenville, maybe a lot, but that might be a good connector or bridge between. 
the two communities um, to, to try and help them. Uh, for Greenville residents to learn more about the village Portland Way, because I think usually they don't, they might not know that much. Um, so I think you got a really good foundation here with your board and with hiring Nathan and good staff and you know, as Julie would say, with my many times around the block, you know, <laughs> what, I, what I found is that the That's best... That's a good thing. Uh, yeah, it's right. a good thing, yes. That when you've got trust and you've got cooperation between staff and board, the sky's the limit. You can do amazing things. So I think at this point, you're, you've got a good uh, direction and a good future. So thank, thank you. you very much. I talked to the staff, and they, they were all in agreement that... Today could be Dave's last day. And then Dave told me he's going to move to Hortonville because he realized it's such a beautiful community. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. Empty bed yeah. <laughs> yeah. But spread the word to your friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> but thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's all I have. And we'll move to B, Clerk Treasurer. I was just going to mention that we did post the job ad for office assistant deputy clerk, deputy treasurer. We posted that on Friday with a deadline of January 11th. And we have been very busy with the preparations for the preliminary audit, which is Tuesday, December 22nd. Because it's a new firm, it's like starting you know, from ground zero, but we're getting there. Um, the tax bills were mailed on Monday, December 14th. And just a reminder, if anybody's not going to run, turn in their non-candidacy paperwork to me by Monday, December 28th. That's the deadline. Any questions for Jane? Yeah, I, quick question. iPads, are they in? Yeah. They are in. <laughs> we're trying. Nathan's trying. So. <laughs> Corporate talked to me today. Uh, they're just finishing up the email transfer. We're on Monday next week, we're going to be doing our transfer. Um, at, after Monday, they should be done. And then if we have time to uh, open them all, download everything, get everything set up, write down all the serial numbers and whatnot, then we'd be in contact with you all. Okay. And then starting next year, for the, so by our next uh, board meeting, we will have uh, village emails. Yes. So. Or before that. Before that, I assume. Okay. So yeah, I assume you're going to send us some correspondence. Let us know what those are. Yep. Okay. Set up the temporary passwords and all that. Yep. And then yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And Just those are running again. It's January fifth, right? Uh, yes. So December. 28th and December and January 5th. Okay. If there are no more questions, we'll move to C, Director of Public Works. I just have one. Uh, Lisa, the utility court, I handed it out. It's called uh, Warren Sewer Utility COVID History. Uh, we just wanted to mention that uh, at the end of 2020, uh, we stopped. Uh, assessing penalties in February due to the PSC rules and throughout the course of the year they kept moving the goalposts saying uh, we're going to make you wait until August 1st to assess penalties then November 1st. Anyways, now we're going to do our winter rules and uh, the PSC wants everybody to wait until April 15th. Uh, typically uh, we don't shut off water in the winter months anyways. So I think it, down below you can see a disconnection of service. So for the customers that have, uh, are behind, uh, they were only behind for the months of November and December because everything prior to, I think, October 31st went on the tax roll. Yes. So it was about $40,000 went to the tax roll. So, uh, half of that was one residence. So, uh, but yeah, things are a little, uh, a little bleak for a few people, but all in all, the utilities, uh, humming along nicely, so uh, I think on the very bottom, Lisa mentioned the tax certification. So there's about 59 grand, 49 customers, but the majority of it was one customer. So. And uh, that's all I have. 
I have a question. Okay. So I've kind of noticed that we've had a few residents where like we've had major water breaks in their house and then they've run up these ginormous bills, like abandoned property is what I'm thinking. Do we have something in place or can we get something in place that kind of alerts us to, to go check on that or send somebody to go check on that? We can, our software does flag it, but it doesn't flag it to us. If you, if you want that kind of software, it costs a lot of money. Okay. I was just curious. It just yeah. seems like, you know, we've had a few of them and then it just sort of becomes a drag on our... There is. You know. Well, it's, it's, we end up getting paid eventually. It's not really a drag on the utility. It would be nice. I mean, we wouldn't have lost that house if we had an alarm, but uh, that house, that's a whole another okay. ball game. Because uh, we had that water shut off, somehow it got turned back on. So, uh, yeah, Lisa can't get a flag during the day, but sometimes it's, it's just it's just a little out of a thousand, you know. And these things are rotating all the time because they're being read over the. I also think of snowbirds, you know, yeah. like the folks that go away and no uh, one's there. Are home. stuff like that yeah. out here, you know, premium software programs, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollar programs. We're not big enough for that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's actually a snowbird that uh, was asking me if we had anything, and then yeah. I. Sparked oh, we, we can if you want. <laughs> it's, it's expensive. Yeah. Okay. Can they just have their water? Turned off. They can have their water turned off, but a lot of times people don't want to do that because they still keep the heat on in their house, but on a very low level, they just and they have relatives stop in every now and then, but well, not daily. Like Charlie's, they, I mean, they have to winterize uh -huh. the pipes and stuff because it's when people go away, we don't we recommend that they trickle water, trickle water, mm -hmm. and like so even the, when something's shutting it off is the worst thing, they you even have problems, problems then, mm -hmm. you know, unless you yeah. shut it off. A lot of people do call yeah. in and trickle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I meant because you could shut it off before. Yeah, I mean, when I when I go out of town, I shut it off at the meter. Yeah. Just like, in case. Yeah, I don't, I don't do want to go home. But, uh, yeah. yeah, if you're going out of town for two weeks in January and spend 30 below, it'll freeze up right outside your house pretty quick, uh, which we can't help. But uh, you should leave it trickle in the winter. Yeah. Okay. Just, it was a curiosity and yeah. just trying to prevent before, it's before it happens again. Any other questions for Carl? If not, we'll move to D, Police Chief. I passed out the um, November total of incidents. You want to answer Peter's question even though he's not here? Sure. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> how many were at the place? The cottage? No, not a whole, I mean, not a whole lot. We Nothing had, crazy? We had an incident, um, an unfortunate medical incident, so. Okay. Um, but other than We're that. We're doing good otherwise? Yeah. We're we getting a lot of parking issues? Is think, that really high? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, what, is that street, is, it, is it street parking? Like the, the November 15th parking mm -hmm. problem? Okay. Right. Yeah. So oh, so it's like the winter, winter rules have yeah. moved, moved in and now we're, so it's not localized to any specific area? No. Okay. Yep. In the beginning we were, I think the first night we had like 31. Cool. Um, you know, we posted it on Facebook, um, let people know ahead of time. And we had a couple people who came in, um, Ogini County, uh, our CAD system, they started a <coughs> different screen that we can open and track for um, like parking requests. So if somebody has a parking request, we can start a screen for that and um, put those in there. That would be the one right directly underneath it. So then we had six people who um, contacted us in the month of November, from the, well, from November 15th to November 30th asking um, if they can leave a vehicle, but that way then we can track it too because the ordinance states that they can have only so many of them per snow season. So, How much is that ticket? $20. Okay. <coughs> I'm not parking. No, no, I just, I was curious. <laughs> yeah, so in case I hear about it from somebody. Yeah. Well, you know, and if we have, you know, people call in, like we had Thanksgiving, um, you know, for the weekend, people had family over. You know, we highly suggest that they call you know, and let us know what vehicles are going to be parked out there. And so this is any time parking, not just overnight? So it's, it's overnight parking. It's just overnight parking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. 
Um, we have the upcoming national mobilization of the drive sober, get pulled over, and that starts um, tomorrow and runs through uh, January 1st. It's the drive sober or get pulled over. So we'll be posting something on Facebook, hopefully uh, keeping people safe through the holidays. And then uh, we received uh, $27,577.15 $27, for the roads to recovery. That's our second payment. So we had a total of 46420 I think it was. Does that sound right, Jane? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that's what's, what's been reimbursed. What is that percentage of what was submitted? We submitted it all. We got... All. All. Yep. That's all. Awesome. Four, Forty-six thousand two hundred and twenty dollars. We have an additional thirteen cool. hundred and thirteen dollars and forty-two cents because we were able to submit on behalf of the school district. So we were told that we we are able to submit over. So we're waiting to see if we get that. But otherwise, we That's submitted. That's just icing on it. it yeah. On the top. I think it was ninety ninety-seven hundred dollars for the school district. Yeah, because their budget is way out of whack with, with COVID. Yeah. Any questions for Chris? Good info. Now we'll move to e-library director. I really don't have much. Um, I kind of mentioned it during the um, under new business, but feel free to stick around for a two-minute tour of the library, new shelves at the meeting. <coughs> Put a big bow on it for Allie for Christmas. <laughs> oh, Can you sense just the excitement here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Allie? F attorney. Um, Two thirty one Lakeview. Uh, nothing's happened since the last meeting. I'm waiting for the county to get back to us. Um, so I'll continue to report on that. That's all I have. Okay, we'll go to G, building permit report. It is in the packet. And let's see, Gold Cross Ambulance Run Report and News. And that is also in the packet. D, Hortonville Civic Association, and Peter is out. E, Senior Activities Committee. <coughs> Um, Anything, Pat? We haven't met. I just double checked with the people that do the meals on Wednesdays, and they're going through March, she thought. So that'll continue. That's about all I have. Okay. And we'll go to 11 comments and suggestions from citizens present. There are none. And D is a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. We are now adjourned.